You want a riot? I'll show you a riot. Go over to patreon.com slash productions For less than the cost of keeping for-profit prisons open, you can support our cra- these, their crazy shows. That's bonus episodes, early access, and exclusive content just for you. Again, at patreon.com slash Productions. Now let's break out of here. Welcome to the After Credits Cast, the only film podcast to do an episode covering a prison break that isn't Shawshank Redemption. I am your host, AJ Waseska, and I am joined by Ryan Metters. And I still have not seen Shawshank Redemption. Yet. It'll be on our list. We have a, we we can do a we can do a uh, uh, Stephen King season. And I think wait, is it Stephen King? Ish. I I know. Yeah, no, Shawshank is Stephen King. You're okay, right. Okay, so I know Green Mile is. I mm-hmm. couldn't remember if Shawshank was too or not. So. Yeah, Shawshank is. Too. Does he have a thing for prisons? I didn't know this. This is something. This is something <laughs> new to me. <laughs> My mind's being blown. I'm just sitting here talking about Avatar. <laughs> Bleh. Uh, if you want to blow our minds, you can go to patreon.com slash Cast Productions to support our show. You can also go to YouTube, Pippa, Apple Podcast, whatever Google's doing, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podcast Addict to find us on other platforms. And if you want to surprise us as well on social media, we're on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. Follow us, like us, talk to us. We're happy to hear from you. And if you want to reach out to us directly to explain other movies that, that Stephen King has done that I may not be aware of, Ryan, where could I email that to? Uh, they can email us to another life-changing adventure with Zuko at... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. That's evacstation at gmail.com. I'm the only one who's still bummed that Toph didn't get an episode with Zuko. <laughs> me too, man. <laughs> um, Although, to be fair, she did get, like, the one-on-one chat with Iroh. Yeah, no, not very many people got that. Yeah, that's a, that's a rare treat. Mm-hmm. Well, and of all the people who got uh, an episode with uh, Zuko, it's Sokka who gets two. Mm-hmm. And that'll be yeah. today's episode, covering the two-part special, The Boiling Rock. Both airing on July 16th, 2008, over two months after its DVD release. Weird. <laughs> written by... What? <laughs> written by Mei Chan, her first and only writing credit, and Joshua Hamilton, uh, and directed by Joaquim Dos Santos and Ethan Spalding. Both were done by J Animation, J M Animation, and Moy Animation, who worked on these episodes. Uh, the cast includes some new voices, including Roger Rose as the Bully Guard, uh, Ezekiel Rollins as Chin Sang, and Wade Williams as the Warden. Why did I automatically think of Deadpool? <laughs> that, that's I, fair. He- I hear Wade Wu, and it's just like Deadpool. What are you doing? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> uh, who the hell let Deadpool in the booth? But uh, yeah, no. So I remember specifically buying the DVD for this before it came out on TV because I was wondering when new episodes were coming out and when this and why the season had just suddenly had like a hit another hiatus, a, stale, a, a stall, whatever. And I was walking around, and I saw this on the shelf in like a Target or something, and I'm like, why is this DVD out? Did I miss these episodes? And since Nickelodeon wasn't airing them at all, I just figured I'd buy it and watch it and be like, okay, well I'm caught up now. Somebody had to mess that up. That that makes zero sense. Somebody had to fuck that it's up. It's very weird. <laughs> um, Ryan, do you have some fun facts for us? I do. Three, in fact. Uh, the design of the prison in, is uh, actually in reference to Alcatraz, which was nicknamed The Rock. Uh, it's my Sean Connery impression. I will never do it if again. you want to see that episode of the podcast, uh, <laughs> click this link below. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this also boasted a history of no successful escapees. Ironically, while the boiling rock is inescapable due to boiling ro- waters, the water surrounding Alcatraz is very cold, making it equally inescapable. Very fun. Very facts. <laughs> very fun. Very facts. <laughs> <laughs> too facts. Too furious. <laughs> anyway, um, next up, the warden is voiced by American actor Wade Williams, not Wilson, not Deadpool. <laughs> Uh, who had a starring role as Captain Brad Bellick on Fox's television series Prison Break, uh, about a man jailed for a crime he did not commit. Um, that had uh, Wentworth Miller, if I'm not mistaken. I can look it up. Yeah? I can look it up uh, while you're doing your facts. I'm pretty I sure that was the guy. Uh, he was he played Captain Cold in uh, in The Flash. Uh, I think you're right. That's I remember that guy. face being that show. Hang on. Let me look mm-hmm. Prison break uh 
starring, where are my actors at? Uh, yep, Wentworth Miller. He played Michael Schofield. Yeah, I still gotta watch Actually, that. I heard it was really good. Uh, his brother, uh, Dominic Purcell, is also on that show as Lincoln Burroughs. Yes, yes. He like Dominic Purcell also played uh, Fire Firestorm. Oh my God! So they just went from Prison Break to doing more crimes. The Flash. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, I, I gotta applaud oh that my one. That's God. good. Hey, hey, man. I applaud their agent. That's that's some that's some killer booking right there. Uh, final fun fact for this episode. According to the Avatar extras from this episode, the effects of the cooler cause most firebenders to lose their bending for about a week. Zuko has to be a very powerful firebender in order for the cooler to have no such effects on him, even with his breath of fire technique. That's all those lessons with my man Iroh, the best character. Like, I would also like say playing, the dragons like helped a little player. bit, but yeah, Iroh did most of the work. Wait, yeah, that too, that too. It's impressive, most impressive. It just it it, it was it was just such a, a, a powerful callback to uh I to um the siege of the water tribe where Iroh was like, okay, it's going to be super cold, so remember your Breath of Fire technique so that it'll keep you warm. This was just the direct callback to that. So I'm like, Iroh! He's still teaching us! And it was a, it, it was a subtle callback, too, so that's impressive. Um, and he, did, he, he, was, he just looked so boss when they finally got him, he just... Did you learn your lesson? <sighs> nah. <laughs> I'm like, alright, that's the man. That's the man. Uh, I'm with you. Good stuff. Um, I've got a synopsis here for you, Ryan, whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Let's get it. Sokka is still reeling from the guilt of having failed in the Eclipse invasion plan. So he devises a plan himself, another plan, to free, find and free his father from jail. Zuko tags along because Sokka's plan is stupid and he needs someone to have his back. While Hakoda isn't there, Suki is. Very strange for a co-ed prison. Uh, they devise a pretty good plan, but some prisoners get involved and they put a wrinkle in said plan. I've said the word plan a lot. Uh, but this plan, plan, plan. but this delay helped because the new transport of prisoners arrives, including Hakoda. The prisoner does not rat out Sokka or Zuko, because, but only because he wants in on the next shot of escaping. Uh, and, they, and they'll need his help as Azula's angels have arrived. The team decides to take the warden hostage and use the prisoner transport as their escape. While it works, Azula and the warden almost kill them. They are spared when uh, Mei and Tai Li turn against Azula, crumbling her ego and trust in others. More on that in a couple episodes. Uh, they will return, or they return to the Air Temple with their prisoner friend to boot. Finally, we are a family again. Aww. This has so much good stuff happening. Like I don't even know where mm -hmm. to start for, for, for sure. But uh, what did you think overall of the episode? I mean, this is this is a this is a good two parter, and it's kind of. It's kind of, like its importance is kind of hidden in the idea that it's a filler two-parter because it's just we're gonna go and bust my dad out of prison. In the grand scheme of things, not super important, but they deal us a, a blow to Azula's psyche that is crucial in her downfall here. Like it's it's literally the big reason why Zuko can win. So it's kind of it, it's kind of obfuscated in that. Um, I think it's a really really good set of of episodes that kind of hides its overall importance. I, I would argue, furthermore, uh, in agreement, but like t taking a step further, um, it's also as an important instrumental episode. In fact, for Sokka, um, leading up to this episode, his confidence is broken, shattered from what happened before, and by not only reuniting with Suki but also saving his dad. He kind of builds himself back up, and he does so with some of the most amazing and ingenious uh, on uh, 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 improvisational planning uh, this series has allowed him to do. And uh, it's, it's just, I don't know, it, it just allows this character to not just like grow, but kind of reshape himself back into the character we know he can be. Yeah, he gets to pick himself up in this episode. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I think without that, uh, the it, final episodes where they fight the Fire Lord would not have come together nearly as well. Not just because Suki wouldn't have been there to save him, but because he wouldn't have believed in himself enough to be able to make the tough decisions. Mm -hmm. So, I think this episode is way more important than people give it credit for. Maybe not the most important by any means, but certainly in the upper half, if not the upper, like, 25%, I would say. 
I like that. I like that. This is this is Sokka's loyalty mission. Mm-hmm. We've, 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 We've got to get we've got to get him to be loyal before we before we uh, jump into the Omega Relay. That's 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 a Mass Effect call out for all y'all fans. What, what's, what, Hit me up, y'all know what's going what's on. What's funny is I was thinking like Saints Row because they have a similar setup where you have to do loyalty missions with your team to get them to their higher levels to fight the final bosses. <laughs> so I, I I got you, but it was a different reference, but I got you. Um, so. Speaking of uh, bringing her along, uh, your teammates for missions, uh, why didn't Sokka consider bringing Katara or Ain or Toph? All of which could have aided their escape so much more easily. Well, again, it's his loyalty mission, not theirs. No, I, um, I think, I think much like Katara, Katara's in a in upcoming episode, um, it's possible that the rest of the group would have considered it to be not a, an, an unnecessary risk. Um, to uh, to risk their whole thing for uh, for a mission that, while it's important to Sokka in the overall grand scheme of things, isn't a huge importance. Like absolutely saving their father is important, but when we're talking about like the concerted war effort, like they're going to an unescapable prison to see if he's there because <laughs> they don't even know if he's there or not. So it would be too much of a risk. I think they would kind of, they they would they would try to talk him down from the plan. So that's why he doesn't say anything, and he just initially is going to go by himself. And Zuko, who doesn't want to cause too many waves since he's the newest member of the group, but also understands a good amount of where Sokka is coming from, offers his help rather than rats him out. I would say Toph would have been on board for this only because a we know she's got a crush on Sokka at this point. Like, it's not, like, spoken, but they've made it pretty clear she does. And two, yeah. she can metal bend any fucking thing she wants. That prison's her bitch. <laughs> like, she'd go in and be like, oh, we're, we're, we're breaking something out of prison? Give me give me five minutes. This will be easy. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I, I think, um, I, I think you're right, but also, like, I, I wouldn't want to make tough hang around with her aunt, with with Suki and 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 Sokka. I don't know. I just feel bad. No, I know. I know it's going to happen late. I know it's going to happen in the in the finale, but it just makes me feel sad. I know, I know, but <sighs> my ship, my ship. I know. I I just think that for, for as good a planner as Sokka is, this seems like an oversight to me cuz even Katara with her water bending could have made that whole boiling lake a nothing. It would have been it would have been so easy on her then. Yeah, but Katara would have absolutely been the voice of reason and would not have wanted to go along yeah, with it. Maybe she likes her. Da- she, maybe she likes her it's dad her dad. Enough, she might it have is done her it. Her dad, but yeah. But I don't know. It's, I would have loved to have seen how that would have gone down, but it would not have been a two-parter for sure. <laughs> they would have gotten done in one episode. Yeah. Um, okay. Next one. Uh, anyone else weirded out by the fact that uh, this is a co-ed prison? <laughs> I wasn't super weirded out due to the fact that it's Nickelodeon, so anything untoward would not have been greenlit at all. <laughs> Fair. This is just... I've never heard of a co-ed prison. Just... It's definitely weird. So... It's definitely there for the sake of convenience. But yeah. 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 Um, I have to assume... I don't even think they have a separate wing for women and men in that thing, which is also kind of weird. Like, if you're going to have a co-ed prison, fine, but at least keep them separated because the, the, you, know, you know the guys in there are going to do some stupid shit. Yeah. Again, Nickelodeon. I know. They're not I know. gonna. They're, they're not even gonna gonna allude to the fact that anything untoward could have happened. Even though we're in a prison full of people who've probably done it, murders. Yeah, it's literally a prison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, it's weird to think about. It's just really weird to think about. There is no sexual assault in America. I mean, um, in the Fire Nation. <laughs> uh, yeah, true. They're too busy with world conquest. Um, yep. What crime do you think Chinsain committed? Uh, or, or it was convicted of, and do you believe his claim of innocence? Absolutely not, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> See, he did that shit. Like, OJ, he did that mm-hmm. shit. Um, well, totally didn't. I, I'm not sure what I think he did, though. What, like, do you have any idea? Like, do you have any, any, any fun ideas to throw out there? I don't know, because th- the problem is with this being a kid's show, they try to be as vague as possible. Um, he seems like he's got like 
maybe some temperament issues, and he definitely is a big muscle-bound idiot at times. <laughs> so I want to say it was definitely a violent crime. But what? Yeah. But the question becomes, even if he did a violent crime, how has the Fire Nation not just recruited him to be a soldier to fight on their behalf? Like, it seems like they'll take anybody as long as they're willing to, like, beat the crap out of people. Like, he would be a very good Fire Nation soldier. I mean, was it ever... Is it ever established that he is a... He is of the Fire Nation? Because if he's from a different nation, then it would make sense. Maybe. I thought he was a firebender. Am I wrong? I don't believe so. I'm gonna look it up real quick. I'm no. pretty sure he was, but I could be wrong. Let's see... According to the Avatar Wiki, his nationality is Fire Nation. His weapon of choice is fire, so he is a firebender. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, then yeah, I don't know. He like he he must have been like completely uncontrollable and lacking discipline, so they couldn't put him in the mm-hmm. army. I mean, granted, yeah, I w- that would make sense. You're not going to get everyone to be on your 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 uh, roster because some people are not going to follow the the creed. But it's weird to think that the, you couldn't convince someone who is violent to be violent for you, you know? Yeah. Um, why do you think... He... Although it, do, it does make sense that if if even they couldn't control him, that's why they put him in the unbreakable prison. Mm-hmm. And I guess it makes sense he'd be a firebender too because they do put him in the cooler. I mean, you don't... Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're because, right. Because, I mean, you don't put someone in there if they're not going to firebender, otherwise you're just basically giving them frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, sorry, prisoner, we thought you were going to kill us with your fire, but I, I guess we're fine. Oh, you're dead. I mean, he he's not going to hurt us anymore. <laughs> um, going on, uh, off shit, uh, shit saying a little bit more. Uh, why do you think he decides to leave his friend and girlfriend behind on the second escape, escape attempt? I think it's just the desperation at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the fact that he was so close to escaping and fucked up. Like, like he's like, I'm not chancing it at this point. I just need to get the hell out of here. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. Also to show his cowardly nature. Yeah, th- th- that works. Um, does this episode successfully capture the feeling of other Prison Break films, movies, uh, and how does it compare? Um, I think it does It does a good job for uh, the constraints that it's in. I mean, of course, since it's Nickelodeon, they can't really, they can't, like, attempt to even come close to what prison is actually like. Uh, so they have to do like a kid's like uh, uh, like a, a, a euphemism of a prison. Uh, essentially, they have to treat it with kid gloves. Uh, so you can't you kind of limited in that aspect. Uh, but the idea of the kooky escape plans, uh, making use of the guards, like shift changes and whatnot, playing off the warden's ego. Uh, having to deal with other prisoners while you're trying to escape. I think it hit those notes pretty well. So I think it held up uh, and was a close approximation to a prison break movie as Nickelodeon could make. Mm. Yeah, no, that, that seems pretty pretty on spot there, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I think all that it is really missing for me, aside from, like, you know, the darker, creepy undertones of actual prisons, uh, would probably be, like... Mm, Maybe the whole... I don't know. I feel like the stakes aren't super high. And I think it's because we start off with people breaking into the prison, and my feeling is just, oh, if we can break into it, breaking out should not be super difficult. Like, it's, it's still a challenge no, by no means, but, I mean, if you can break into a place, then... It's definitely possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas in other movies, like Shawshank Redemption and so on... Uh, you're seeing it from the prisoner's perspective. They don't go in with the intention of getting someone out. They are just there. And so when you see them break out, it, there's a more satisfying feeling of, oh, hey, they overcame all these weird odds to be able to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I agree. Um, so it's not bad, but it definitely misses some of that 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 uh, that schadenfreude, that, 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 that satisfaction. So. Mm-hmm. Um, would the first escape attempt have worked if Sokka and friends had left on the boat? I think it's possible. Um, I think, well, because there would have been so many people on the boat, 
the 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 likelihood of somebody rocking the the boat and getting some some boiling water in there and raising the alarm might have been a little higher. Um, it probably would have been the safer play to try and just escape right away, but uh, I think pr- uh, escaping uh, or like waiting for the next uh, the next attempt uh, actually proved to be very useful there. Even though that second attempt was super risky with all the things they had to do. Amazingly risky, but he was there for his dad. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. If, if there was a chance. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I almost think that plan might have been doomed, though, from the minute Shitsang got involved. Like, yeah, he helped them get to the cooler, which is important. But I think just his impatience and his um, general demeanor gives me the impression that he probably would not have capitulated with the plan the way Sokka wanted. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, th- I think so. I think you're right on that. Yeah. And I think despite Sokka being the leader of this little, little ragtag group, they probably would not have listened to him because he is a kid. <laughs> yeah. Also, Chitsang has, like, no respect for anybody, no, really. So, I, I think that plan was doomed from the start, and I think it was a smart call overall for them to wait just on that ground alone, even if they didn't realize it. Um, we're, we're blowing through these quick, holy shit. Uh, why didn't Zuko talk to Mei about his departure versus simply leaving? And do you think she could have been reasoned with? I think anybody who knew his plan was a threat to fucking it up. I also think that his feelings for Mai were real and genuine, and it's almost like wanting to put off the breakup because you really like the person, but it's just not working, and you don't, but you don't want to hurt their feelings. So I think while there were practical reasons for him not to tell May Amai because like literally his escape depended on it, there was also the the teenage bit of I don't want to have this talk because once we do, I'm gonna have to watch her heart break in real time. Look, if you play it in slow motion, you can watch the exact moment it breaks. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Good old Ralph. Uh, good, old Ralph. good call. Good call back. Um, I don't know. I think the pro- my argument, though, is that she is a relatively intelligent person. I think she doesn't really have loyalty to the Fire Nation. She just has loyalty to her friends. And, and the, yeah, the people she cares about. I think if Zuko really trusted her and uh, believed that she cared about him, that it would have been wise to actually have the conversation. Don't invite her along. Because you don't need to put her life in danger. You don't need to draw any more attention to your group than you already are. And you certainly don't need to put her name on the wanted list, too. Uh, let, let her make that choice herself. But um, uh, I would say that at least have the conversation say, Hey, listen, I, I want this to work, but I have to take care of something. I have to go with the Avatar for a short while. When this war is over, we can pick things up again. But I have a decision I have to make, and it's going to have to be now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 another stark reminder that these are fucking teenagers. Mm-hmm. No, I, know. I know. <laughs> And so, like, like the the like, I completely understand his rationale, but I also understand that it's a less mature way of thinking about it, or better yet, a less thought out way. It's, it, I I would say it's less that it's that uh, he doesn't know if either of them can handle it as maturely as it needs to be handled in order for his plan to succeed. And I think it's really interesting that even after the betrayal and even after, like after she confronts him and like all this happens, she actually proves how understanding she would have been because her love for him overrules everything that she's been brought up to 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 think and to, and to know mm-hmm. uh, so it's it's not a risk that Zuko wanted to take 
but the end of this two-parter proves that had he done it she would have made good on that relationship Mm -hmm. so it's just that he didn't give her a chance to 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 try you hear hear that man out there give your ladies a chance they might prove you right or wrong or what Mm -hmm. have you um speaking of uh ladies proving themselves well uh are suki's contributions to team avatar overlooked and or (laughs) underappreciated Uh, yes and no. I want to say I think she's an, I think she's an amazing warrior. I think tactically she's fantastic. She's in the, she's a great martial artist, and she can really hold her own uh, with the likes of Sokka. I think though, as far as the roles filled on Team Avatar, she doesn't really have a stand out role she's more of a support role to Sokka she's an she's an amazing warrior but in terms of like her actual contributions it's more towards other people's plans rather than coming up with something or contributing something that's entirely her own does that make me sound like an asshole no a lot of it is definitely because a lot of her character is building up other characters and yeah, it, it, it's a bummer when female characters get stuck in that kind of role, but in this show, that isn't the case for all of them. It just happens to be the case for her. I mean, hey, the Kyoshi Warriors found Appa, man. She'll, I'll, I'll never say anything bad about them. They they found my boy when he was lost in the wilderness. Oh, I get you, I get you. It just is, well, yeah. let's think about it. Suki only made it up to B tier, so... <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, like, like it, it's another, it's another case of the bar is too goddamn high. <laughs> if if they had had more episodes and more time, they probably could have given her more things to do that would have allowed her to be a better character. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, is it a surprise that May and Tylee would turn on Azula? And what does that mean for Azula going forward? Avoiding, of course, any finale talk, because we'll get there. We'll get there. How can we avoid? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So this is... This is the... This, it's fantastic. This is the big moment of the episode. Yes, this is th- this is the surprise resolution of the episode. Because if you told me... If, if before watching it for the first time, you told me essentially that this was just... This is a prison break, epi- a prison break two-parter where... Sokka goes and tries to rescue some of the people that were captured on the day of Black Sun, I'd be like, okay. That's that's no big. Should be a fun episode, but I'm not expecting a whole bunch of it. But oh boy. <laughs> the the very end is so crucial. Um, so it, like, the you can, like, even when we go back to uh, uh, the beach episode, Uh, where all the Fire Nation kids are hanging out, you can see that the bonds that hold them are not amazingly strong. Or at least, let me put it They're tenuous at best. They are tenuous. But I think what what I mean to say is Azula's bonds to everyone else are tenuous at best. I think my really cares for Ty Lee, although Ty Lee is like insufferably happy for her. I think Ty Lee really cares for Mai, even though she seems so fucking gloomy all the time. We know that Mai is in love with Zuko, and that Zuko is also in love with Mai. So we know those are real, real ties. But Azula's ties are only based in fear. And I think... Azula knows that but is fine with it because she gets what she needs from it. It's only when there's something stronger than fear that her worldview is shook. (laughs) And all of a sudden the confidence that she had is just on thin ice now. Which, which, uh, again, foreshadowing, if if y'all check out that comic, they dive deep into that too. (laughs) I'm gonna read it, man. I, damn, I said. I, I know. I just let everyone else know because I'm sure not everyone's read it. It's, it's. Oh man, yeah. I. That's yeah. That's. It is. It is the best part of the episode. It is 100 percent the best part of the episode, and it's so surprising because I did not see it coming until it happened. Like 
Like, you have you have my actually helping them escape, and you're like, oh, shit. And then Azula's like, it's you! What the fuck? Put her under arrest! Like, like, this bitch, you should have feared me more! I'm gonna hit you with the lightning! And Mei pulls out the knives, like, okay, we're gonna scrap, and then Ty Lee fucking chakra fucking chi blocks Azula, like, puts her on the ground! Uh, so here's the thing, too. We talked about you talked about the, the the ties that Azula has being based on fear. I think the reason that she knows it's not stable, but because but it gets her what she wants, is because that's the same bond she probably has with her father. Mm, that ooh, that's the per- okay. Go deeper in that. That's the person yeah. who raised her, and she takes she idolizes him. She follows everything he basically does, and. Everyone is afraid of Oza. Everyone's afraid of the Fire Lord. And I think even she is a little bit. But she also respects the fact that... Because I, I don't think there's any love in her at all towards anybody. Um, I think we've discussed that before. And I, mm-hmm. and I think the way Oza carries himself and the way he's raised his kids kind of shows that she respects the fear towards him while Zuko actively is against it and wants to have a real relationship. I don't think Azula's ever wanted that. And I think that is why she's aware of how fragile that relationship she has with Tylee and May is. Because she knows that they'll do everything she that, that she asks, but there's a risk, there's a chance that it will break. But she is avoiding it, she's ignoring it, because she never tra- betrayed her father. I think because of that, she thinks that they will continue to follow in her footsteps, and I don't think she ever expected that Zuko, of all people, would be able to turn them against her. Ever. And I can understand that, because up until recently, Ozilla's only known Zuko as a bit of a coward. A bit of a weakling. And before his firebrending train with the dragons, yeah, you could argue that was the case, but he's grown, he's changed, and she hasn't. And it shows that his... That, that, that Ozai's uh, fathering and mentoring has a very stifling effect on his kids when they refuse to get out of his shadow. I like that. And I, I agree with it, but I want to take... I take it a step further mm-hmm. by thinking the moment that loved ones... Well, not even loved ones, but the moment that the people closest to her chose Zuko over her, it immediately reminds her of her mother. Yes. Who, did? Who in Azula's eyes... Betrayed her. Yeah. And who, in Azula's eyes, like, like always favored Zuko over her because there was something wrong with her. Or, be, like, like, and it's, it, so just... It, it unexpectedly pressed the trauma button for her, and it just shook her entire world. View. A button that was very dusty and old, but it was still there. <laughs> yep. I was like, no, I haven't thought about that in forever. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. That got deep. That was good. That was, that was a very good reading that one, I think. <laughs> The, the 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 meat of this episode is in the last three minutes. It's in the last like three four. Which minutes, is sad honestly. because so much of the episode is good, but that one just elevates it to another level. Because holy cow, <laughs> the, this two parter would be filler. It would be good filler, but this two parter would be filler if not for the last three minutes. Mm-hmm. And like we said, we will dive super deep into all of this uh, during the finale episode, which is coming. It's coming in. We're gonna talk about that, Sean. Don't b- please believe we're gonna talk about that a lot. Coming in two weeks. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be great. Actually, wait. No. Some of these episodes are coming out six days apart, so twelve days. Yeah, twelve days until this t- until that happens. <laughs> um, final question I have, and I know we're racing through this surprisingly quick. Um, was this operation a successful redemption for Sokka? And did he even need that redemption to start with? Why or why not? I wouldn't go so far as to call it a redemption because to redeem someone implies that they failed. He, but um, to, but to him, he failed. he failed. To him, he failed. Yes, to him, he failed. So is it a redemption in his eyes? Possibly. I think 
for the grand scheme of for the grand like arc of the story it's not necessarily redemption because he doesn't need to be redeemed but it does restore confidence in himself like having a successful mission under his belt where he has to think on the fly escape from the from the inescapable prison um not only gets suki back but also gets his father back he takes chances he takes calculated risks and he manages to pull it off with his team um it shows that he can stand amongst the tacticians and the generals and you'll see when it comes to the uh what you call it when it comes to the actual final battle he's definitely more assured and more confident when talking to the rest of the troops explaining how the shit's going to go down mm-hmm. so yeah i would i would say this definitely restores some confidence in him and really kind of brings him back to where he was if not just a little bit higher there is an arc and you bring it up um because at the beginning of day of black sun he is struggling to explain his plan he is fumbling all over himself and yes you're right by the mm-hmm. end of the series but when he gets to the finale he has a plan he is confident in his plan and he thinks that everything will go right if they do exactly as he's kind of outlined um and this episode as you said is crucial to that i think without this episode and i think we discussed it already when we were doing our tier lip making uh without this episode without suki and without this, this whole plan uh he would not be who he is uh going forward i think a lot of sakas i think if you go back to the beginning of the series to now a lot of Sokka's journey has been consistent failures with great intentions uh, leading to the moment where he finally gets the, the, the win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like No, I see that. Like, yeah. he failed to save Yue in, in, in his eyes. Um, and because of that loss, he started, you know, taking things more seriously. He started really kind of honing in on what mattered to him, his, the people he cared about. If you go back even further, when he was disrespectful towards women, he failed against uh, Suki in just a straight-up combat. And from that, he learned to respect women and treat people better and ultimately became a better person for it. And as time went on, he became wiser, smarter. And here he is at the end of the series that we'll get to, having mastered so much of what he'd failed at before and becoming this much better person. His arc is very consistently solid overall, like we discussed in our tier making. And I think this episode is pivotal to that almost i want to see a d- the the adult versions of the gang like doing <laughs> their shit in republic city because the fact that we don't get to interact or like see adult soccer it's disappointing it, it's really disappointing man we only get to see him in a flashback where he's Presenting a case again, like like in in front of a in front of a jury. I once I felt a man with, with my, my boomerang. boomerang. <laughs> Just like bruh, come on. Uh, adult soccer would be so much fun. But yeah, because adult soccer is a fuck, still a fucking goofball. But you know that is the warrior. Mm-hmm. That man is the tactician. If you want to get some shit done, ask Sokka how to do it. He'll get you well, there. Well, dude, he's like the Ulysses S. Grant of the fucking Avatar world. Like, the minute you put him up there, he's like, oh, he's this revered general. He's this revered war hero. Everyone's gonna listen to that guy. He's respectful. Fucking preach that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, overall, I I would say that this is redem- uh, redemption for Sokka in his eyes. I think he like you said he gets himself built up and i think that had this not happened whether successful or whether it had been a failure or he just had not gone that ending of the series would not have played as well as it did because he would not have had suki to back him up he would not have had confidence in himself he would probably not even have the bond with zuko to really trust his guidance in trying to figure out how to redirect the group after ang disappears i think that whole finale would have just been a clusterfuck honestly Mm-hmm. So, yeah, as as fillery as this episode is, it's important, and that's that's something I think a lot of people might overlook when going through these episodes. Definitely, I'm so glad that we went through all these episodes. It's like like each episode is actually really really good. Like it has a little gem at least, mm-hmm. M- minus like you know the Great Divide, but like every other episode, uh, yeah, every every other episode is pretty solid. <laughs> Um, that is it for this week uh, on, on the questions. Ryan, is there anything else that I did not bring up that you would like to, to hit on? 
Uh, no, I think we covered everything. Yeah. Gotcha. What are your thoughts on for-profit prisons? <laughs> that's not on the question list oh my god yeah i i I stand against institutionalized slavery aaron yes i do well i'm glad we cleared that up i mean yeah figured i'd just toss in there for funsies good lord um so so, uh we'll jump into the the mail call real quick if you want to reach out to us on tumblr twitter and facebook and tell us your thoughts on uh well, let's skip the controversial political stuff and talk about Azula. Uh, you can reach out to us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also reach out to us by email. Ryan, what's that email? Uh, that email is orange is the new black fire nation edition at g- <coughs> excuse me. No, that's evacstation at gmail dot com. I feel like the name should be fire is the new black. <laughs> like red is the new black. Mm, yeah, there it is. Um. Yeah, with that in mind, let's go ahead and rank these episodes. Uh, so, part one and part two of The Boiling Rock. I don't even remember what their names, like, subtitles were. I think it literally is just part one and part two. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I think you're right. These are hard to rank. <laughs> Especially because they're kind of hard to separate, too. Like, without one, the other one doesn't really work. You know what I mean? I feel like we've done the other two parters just together. Have we not? Uh, the Day of Black Sun, I think we did separately. Are you sure? That one I remember because I think we even said, do we want to do it separately? And I think we did because it made sense to e- do each one individually because they both kind of have a they both have a different episode trajectory. One's a building up to the invasion, and one then is the invasion. So I would say for this one because literally it's all one event just split into two episodes we could probably make this one a one episode ranking kind of thing you know what i mean yeah so boiling rock overall everyone who wants to argue with me you know just, just chill okay listen listen the dvd came out before the mo- the episode things are weird we're gonna rank this as one episode ryan what, what are we gonna rank this one episode as this is This is really interesting because it's a it's a filler two parter up until the third the, the last three minutes, but it's still a really good filler episode. Um, it does a lot of amazing character work. We get some fun world building with the prison. Uh, we get some fun side characters in the prisoners and Chit Sang. Uh, we get Sokka getting his groove back, and then to top it all off, after all that pretty good shit we see the fatal flaw in Azula's psyche. Mm -hmm. I want to give this a a silver. I I almost had a B tier. I want to give this a high silver because it starts off mid to low silver because it's just good. And then the last three minutes really catapult it. I don't think it catapults it to gold, but I think it catapults to high silver. I'm gonna probably give this a gold. It's not the top ranking gold. Wow! Okay. I think the ending does cement it there for me, but I think a lot of the other parts of this episode really work well. Um, You could see some badass ones from Zuko, like, coming out of the fucking uh, freezer for for starters. Mm. Um, You could see Sokka build himself back up. You could see this buddy uh, comedy between Zuko and uh, Sokka that, up until now, I don't think anyone ever expected it. Oh, we didn't really even talk about that very much. Like, the two of them just bonding in this nonsense, like... We got the my girlfriend turned into the moon spirit. That's rough, buddy. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we got this there. Oh, man, I can't believe we didn't even talk about mm, that. Like, there's some gold there that we didn't really hit up on because there's so much else happening. Um, I don't know. I just... I, I don't feel like Silver does this one justice. I think there's just enough happening to get there to gold. I think it's a little unfocused to be a high gold, but it's it's there. It's it's it's, it's in the, the ballpark. Okay, so high silver to low gold. I think we can I think we can agree to be like right in that right in that gray area because yeah. yeah, I I I I think we're largely on the same page. I'm just like the only thing that really stops me from wanting to give it a gold is because of all the other gold tier episodes that I know. Well, I mean, we're about to hit a few platinums in a minute, so I mean, it's... it's... Yeah, we're about to go, like, platinum, platinum in a hot second. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but that is it for this week. This episode feels a little shorter, uh, which, you know, it's, it's fair. There's only two of us, and uh, when you cover a two-parter, it, you can't guarantee it's going to last the full hour. But uh, thank you for listening, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Uh, if you have not checked out our episode in the pre-roll for the ranking of characters, you should so totally do that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, next week, you'll be getting us talking about the Southern Raiders and the Ember Island Players. Y'all are not prepared. I know, I'm not prepared. Uh, uh. <laughs> we'll see you after the credits. Bye. Bye.